Welcome back to my shop. My name is Guy and this is the fourth video of a series I'm doing of building this, which is a curved front walnut buffet. This time I'm going to make the curved drawer fronts and I'm also going to make these curved rails for these curved door panels that go in this section here. It's a lot of fun but there's a lot of work to do so let's get to it. Now to make the curved rails that go on the ends for both the top and bottom of the doors, I need to make those in, by bent lamination process. So I've got this piece of material, it's nice straight grain, it's got a good color to it, and it's fairly thick. I'm going to use this for the fronts, so I need to get four pieces out of this, a little over an eighth inch thick, and I'll clean them up on the drum sander. All this material is a similar color that I'll use as fill pieces. Now the, the rails are going to be three quarters of an inch thick when I get done, so I need at least 24 pieces, an eighth inch thick, and about 22 inches long. Now I'm going to resaw these pieces over at my bandsaw, and I've got a three quarter inch carbide tip blade, I've got a feather board, and I've got my fence set a little bit fat of an eighth of an inch. Actually I think it's like 964 was the, the measure I made. So I've got this plane very flat. And that's the edge that's going to go up against here. I'm going to make a pass and take this board, go over to my joiner and reflatten the face and continue to go down until there's no more of this board left. I've got all the material resawn for what I need. Actually, I actually have one extra piece. And I've got my drum sander set up with some 80 grit paper. I just need to start running this through and get it to that eighth inch thick. I've got everything run through the drum sander and I'm a little bit shy of an eighth of an inch. All said and done, I'm a little bit shy of three quarters of an inch on here. That's okay because once I add the glue it'll get a little bit thicker. But I don't want thicker than three quarters of an inch. So I need to get four curved rails out of here so I just need to cut these to proper length. So here's everything laid out of what I need. I've got the form, I've got the positive and negative, or negative and positive, really depends on how you look at it. I've got a piece of masonite with some wax on it. I've got two calls, one for the inside, one for the outside. These also have wax on to prevent the glue from sticking. I've got the stacks, I've got some wax paper, and a glue spreader. I need to mix up the glue, and I'm going to be using a urea resin glue. Uh, it's pre-catalyzed, I just mix it with water. And the reason I'm going to use that, when it dries, it forms a very, very rigid glue line and prevents spring back, so I don't have to calculate for that, but I do have to keep them in the clamps for at least 12 hours with the heat pad on them. Well, at least I was smart enough, kind of, to make two forms this time. Usually I only make one. I should have made four, I guess, but, you know, it is what it is. So, I'm going to put a heat blanket on it. This stuff has to cure at above 70 degrees. Right now, it's negative two outside, and it's about 55 degrees in here. So, I've got to keep this nice and toasty for about 12 hours. So this is what I was going for, which is no or very little spring back. There's maybe a 32nd of an inch on each end, but these are going to get cut off, so this curve here is going to be perfect for the outside of the case. With one edge of this cleaned up and square, I can put that up against the fence of my bandsaw and cut these to final width. I need to route a groove in here so that the panel will fit in there. And I've marked each piece with a little tick mark there so I know which side it goes on. Now this is actually the right top. So the curve goes towards here and the flat goes here, but I've got to have it turned over like this. So I'm going to take this and I've got my form clamped down to my bench. I just need to clamp this to that and get this flat up on top. Now that that's in there, I need to mark out where the groove is going to be. Now the panel is 5 16ths of an inch thick 
and this is three quarters of an inch thick. So I want to put it right in the center. So I need to mark in seven thirty seconds of an inch and then seventeen thirty seconds of an inch. And I'm just going to use my Incra T rule. It's got a real nice way of marking this out. I've got my router set up with a quarter inch bit and I've also got an edge guide that has two little round pads on here and that'll help follow the curve on the front. I'm clamping it to this because it gives me a nice flat surface to reference everything against. So I've already made the adjustment. As you can see I'm right there on that line. I'm going to make, cut, make this cut in two passes. I've got a quarter inch bit. I'm going to go three eighths of an inch deep and basically the rule of thumb is you don't want to go deeper than the bit is wide. So I'm going to do it in two passes like I said. So I move my turret over. I've already set the depth. I just need to go ahead and make the first two cuts. Now with those two passes I've got this quarter inch groove going down three-eighths of an inch. I need to take off an additional sixteenth of an inch on the back end. So I'm going to take my fence here. It's got a micro adjust feature and I'm going to add a sixteenth of an inch to it. And now that I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the other sixteenth of an inch in one pass. So I put the panel in the uh, rail and everything came out real nice. I don't have any gaps. This is obviously oversized and the panel is oversized right now. But I just wanted to get that groove in there first. These are the styles for the doors. It's all fairly straight grained lumber. I've milled it down to the same thickness as the rails and I've cut them to the proper length to fit in the opening. I need to cut the grooves in the styles that are going to accept the panels. So I've got a 5 16 of an inch bit. I've got it raised up 3 8 of an inch off the table and 7 30 seconds of an inch away from the fence. I also have the fence split so I know where the trailing and the leading edge of it is. Now I've got one of the styles here and I've made a mark where it starts and where it needs to stop. So I'm just simply going to lower it on there, push it through and then pick it up when it hits this edge. Well, it's time to start cutting the rails to length. I've made this jig. Now, this is one of the jigs I've used countless times on this project to cut curves in the, other, in the rest of the piece. So I've got a center line here, and I've got these two pieces. These two pieces represent the, the styles that we're going to be on the inset doors. This is one of the rails. I've got a center line here, and I've got a center line here. I just need to match that up, and then I'm going to clamp this in place. Now, with this clamped in place, I can take my square butt it up against here, square with that, and then I take my marking knife and strike a line. I want to make my cuts for these using the cross cut sled. Now I've taken my pencil and I've darkened in that line a little bit. I'm going to use this block. I'm going to move this block around until I get it, that line perfectly perpendicular with the table. Now that I've got the angle correct, I'm going to take this and I'm going to lock this down. Now I should be able to line up this mark with the edge of my cross cut sled and I'm going to cut perfectly at that angle. Now I'm going to cut these a little fat and trim them down as I need to, but I'm going to ready to go ahead and make the first cut. Now with that first cut made, I can just flip this around and take the line that I made before again, put that in place and the angle should be the same. I'm just going to look and sight down the back here until it meets up with the edge of the cross cut sled. And again, I'm going to cut it a little bit fat and then trim it as needed. I've got these two pieces here which are just mock pieces for the rails but they're the same width. So this should fit in here just like that. 
Now I'm going to join the rails to the styles using dominoes. I've already marked out, if you can see it on there, where I'm going to do that. And since I have my sled already set up for that to be 90 degrees right there, all I'm going to do is move it over, flush it up. I'm going to take this piece of leather right here so I don't dent the wood. Take this clamp, put it on there and get it as far over towards the center of it as I can so that way this piece won't twist at all. With this flushed up here and securely clamped to my crosscut sled, I'm going to move this back. And this is at the same level as this so I can use the face of the door as my reference. Line up this mark with this and go ahead and make the cut. I have both doors dry fit and actually put inside the case and they're a pretty tight fit and I want to keep them that way for now. Uh, I need to make the middle door yet and that's just the same as these other two with the exception of it's flat. So it should be pretty easy but I'm not going to film that. I'm just going to do that off camera. These are the two curved drawer fronts for the piece. I made these in the exact same way that I made the curved rails for the doors on it. I need to mark out rabbits on the curved drawer fronts and that's for the half inch material for the sides that's going to go into them. Uh, they go in at a goofy angle so let me show you how I attack this. I've got my double square set at a half an inch and I'm just going to put it up against here and get that as even as I can with that and take my marking knife and strike a line. I've taken my adjustable T-bevel and adjusted it so it's right at the same angle as that line I made before. I'm installing a dado stack on my table saw and this is 5 eighths of an inch. I only need a half inch of it. But I'm going to take that and I'm going to start adjusting my angle on this till it meets right at the plate. Now I'm going to cut these using my miter gauge and I've cut out a little bit of this underneath here because I need to make a zero clearance insert. Because once I lower this blade and try to move it over, it's going to dip down into this, so I can't have that. So I'm going to raise that up a little bit. I've got a piece of MDF here. I'm just going to slide that underneath like that. I'm going to move my fence over about there. Move my miter gauge and push this through. So I'm going to use these stacks of laminations to my advantage. I want to leave an eighth of an inch on the front. So I'm going to take this and lower it. Now remember the blade is going up like this. So I don't want to put the bottom of this blade right at that mark because it's going to be too low. So I'm just going to go like this, eyeball it. And actually I'm going to start at the second lamination, which is a quarter inch from the front see where that takes me and then I'm going to raise it up slowly till I just kiss that top lamination. Now because the zero clearance table only goes on the one side I need to raise this other side up so I'm just going to take a scrap of quarter inch MDF which is the same thickness as this and put it underneath there so it's level at the same angle. Now with this all set up I can take the miter gauge move it forward and I know exactly where it's going to cut and I'm going to go just a little bit shy of that pencil line and I'll make a test cut for depth. So after that initial test cut I raise the blade up a little bit and I'm a little bit under an eighth inch on the slip right here. That's okay, that doesn't really matter that much. So, but this is the critical one that it's a half inch right here. 
and that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the other drawer front and then I have to move everything over to the other side of the saw blade because that blade only tilts one way and then I'll cut the other side using the same method. Well I've got all the drawer fronts cut and fit into the individual openings. I've done the middle drawer as well and uh, with the rabbits cut in the drawer fronts it's time to start making the rest of the drawers.